Hey, Billy, let's bring in our, our next guest, Cheryl Calhoun, the fempreneur. Right. Hello, Hi. how are you? I, I'm proud of myself every time I say yeah, that well. Yeah, you're doing well. You're <laughs> How's doing it going? Well. It's going well. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I had a really great time with you last week when you were on. The lady, the lady you brought was great. Uh, you're here by yourself today. You didn't bring a guest and you, because you have an agenda. I do, and it is by design um, because I, I really want to speak to women today uh, about something I think that's pretty serious that uh, they need to know about. And um, I'm going to uh, start by asking um, if anybody knows what the 19th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution was. The 19th Amendment. Hmm. Mike Briggs, hurry. Come on. I don't know. Go ahead. Okay. So that was a woman's um, right to vote. That, that's I right. knew that's what it was. I a just was waiting right for you guys. Vote. So, you know, on a historical level, just very quickly, in 1848, three women were really instrumental in uh, leading the, the charge for a national convention. Um, and one of them, whose name is Susan B. Anthony, everybody remembers her name. Um, but uh, Elizabeth Stanton and Lucretia Mott were uh, the other two who were involved. And they launched a, a convention and a movement, not a convention, I call it a movement, uh, to begin to get women engaged with uh, marching together or, or banding together for the right to vote. And it took them 70 years, but by 1920, it was ratified. And they had that, that opportunity now for women to have a, a right to um, vote in political, uh, on, on the political front. You know, prior to that, though, you know, women in the United States, just like they are across the United States or in the world today, uh, are, uh, they, they couldn't own property. Uh, you know, they didn't have rights. that They were really um, supposed to keep the home front going. And I'm not against, please don't get me wrong, I'm not against a woman who loves being a homemaker. But they didn't have, um, they were, they were second-class citizens, in my opinion. And so... <clears throat> The reason I'm here today, Chuck, is because I mentioned to you last week when I was here that uh, we launched an event in Oakland. Mm -hmm. We meaning a group of women, and, I, and it, they're, they're on the screen there. We call, them, we call them the dream team, but we call it, it's kind of, it was a supernova uh, for us. There were, there were six of us who decided that we were going to, um, band together with our networks, and we just talked about how, how powerful the internet is. We were gonna band together with our networks, and we were gonna start enlarging our, our influence online. And so the six of us started with like six million people in uh, connections, and grew by this movement, by, by the launch of our movement, to over 60 million. Wow, wow we. So, so our movement is this. We have the right to vote, but now we need to be working on the front of um, really having the uh, financial, uh, financial prowess to, uh, to be out there earning the same kind of money that a man earns if we have the same credentials, the same experience, you know, the same uh, educational background. And so that's really, our movement now is for women to band together because that was the last time when it, in 1920, or, or over that 70 year period, that was the last time that women really banded together to do something that would cause a, you know, a, a huge change for women, um, not just in the United States, but globally, because it really, it really set a precedence. And the Dalai Lama has said that the Western woman the Western woman, because uh, we have really been at the forefront of trying to get rights for women, uh, will save the world. And meaning, I think, that uh, she will uh, be able to um, bring other women um, the, the rights that, that, that they're, they should have in the first place as women, as human beings. There you go. I mean, <laughs> I, I'm sitting there just listening to go, and my head's going like this because I'm thinking about all the strong women that I grew up with and, and how, how I respected them. Well, 51% of the population is female. I mean, out of 106, we're 165 million people in the United States. And out of that, we have between 80 and 90% of the purchasing influence. So now what I'm, here's, here's my, my, 
my real um, my real message to women is that I saw something on the internet the other day that said, uh, "Look at all these powerful women in in, uh, in uh, politics now who are in Washington D.C." And so when that picture came up, the first thing I thought was, "Would you go?" Would, I'm going to ask you this question: Would you go to see what political party they were they were affiliated with first? A woman? Yeah, if you saw ten powerful women, uh -huh. would you go and as a would you go and check out if they were Republican or Democrat or what what party affiliate? I don't vote like that. Okay. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Okay, so I vote for whoever has the best idea. Okay. And I, I don't. I don't vote. Part, okay. Just one party. Same thing. Same. That was my point. I. I said. The worst thing you could do is immediately go and, and say, you know, well, what party does she represent? Because that is irrelevant. What is relevant is, as a woman, she is moving, she is moving forward as a, move, as, as a woman. And if we looked at women and said, ladies, let's talk about the issues and how we can move the issues forward, and not about whether you know you're a Democrat or Republican or your party line. Who cares? You know that's my message: is that we as women need to get together and we need to say, what is the answer? What is the answer to this issue? And Cheryl Sandberg, who is the CFO of um, Facebook, you know, she wrote a book, Lean In, and that book was uh, it really speaks to some of this. Although she and I kind of differ in an opinion on, she wants, she, she feels like we need to bring gentlemen into the conversation and not that we should leave you out, but I, my opinion is men who, uh, there are men who, um, like you, who already respect women. And so I think that uh, we don't necessarily have to spend a lot of time trying to convince you. I mean, we, you are, yet there are men who don't respect women, and I, in my opinion, it's just like uh, trying to talk to a, a Democrat uh, who wants to try to make them vote uh, Republican hardcore. We need to talk to one another about the issues, and we need to talk to, uh, to women, to one another about the issues. We, we can't convince men to change their ways unless they want to do it themselves. That's, that's my opinion. I think that's probably men or women. Well, you can't change them unless they want to change it. Well, you know? it's true. The, uh, you voting for Hillary? Is that where we're going on this? Nope. Okay. Nope, no, because I'm not, you, you, you have 60 no, million people it. in your network. That you, yeah. you, you, she could win. Yeah, and you know what? It, it, and that's that, that's an issue. Um, you know, I, I'm i not voting for a man or a woman, as you just said, because they're female or male, they're gender. Best person for the job. Uh, I am voting for the best best person for the job and if there's a woman out there that uh, I feel can do the job and by golly I'll vote for her but by the same token you know I look at the candidate if it's a male but you know I think women have a big opportunity here and that is to talk to one another stop talking stop stop uh, being silent um, band together and and as uh, be authentic about how they feel about their futures and the futures for their daughters. And join the Fempreneur Network. And join the <laughs> Fempreneur Network because we are all about uh, women uh, advancing uh, in their careers and in their lives. Awesome. I always love talking to you, Cheryl. Thanks for coming on the buzz. Thank you. All right. We're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back. Stick around.